Today on this old house, we'll show you how to fill the gap between the old casing and the newly exposed old brick. It takes some time, but it's worth it. And I'm finding the hidden gardens of Charleston. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice, nice. Here is right on. Ooh, and the smell just changed. That's bad guano. Oh, lovely. Now it's your turn to save it for the <laughs> next generation. The money's in the detail. Oh, that is beautiful. and welcome back to this old house here in Charleston, South Carolina, where we are working on a couple of projects. Now this is the first one. It is an 1840s Charleston single. And because we're in the historic district, the facade of this building is not gonna change much. But on the inside, well, that's a whole different story. This house hasn't been updated in decades, and you can see that there's plenty of work to be done. The plaster is failing throughout, and the homeowners want to make some significant changes. A lot of this plaster is actually coming off so that we can expose the original brick. They're going to be adding bathrooms throughout, and they're going to be reconfiguring this kitchen space. And Man, a lot of work has happened in here. Mark Regal Buto is our builder. Mark, good to see you. Kev, how are you? All right, you guys have been busy. We have been. All of this plaster is off, huh? We took it all off. It was failing anyway. Mm -hmm. So the owner wants to go for a really nice exposed brick look. That is going to be very distinctive. All right, so uh, do you have a final plan for the layout here? We sort of touched on it last time, but has it been decided on? It has now. Oh, good. You're standing in the new island, all right. which will be configured this way. Nice. Over here will be freezer, refrigerator, and cabinetry. Matter of fact, this is the old mantle that we were careful to preserve. That's a beauty. Over here, we're going to have a large single bowl kitchen sink. Nice. We're going to take the door, convert it to a window to allow for cabinetry. Mm -hmm. Additional cabinetry here. And this will be the focal point of everything. Right. We've selected a ultra sleek modern range. Oh, cool. So that's actually one of the big changes, right? Because the, originally the stove was going to be on that wall. Now we're bringing it over here. Correct. All right. We want to keep the fireplace as a focal point, yeah. but utilize it and slide the range in. So sort of recess it into this. Absolutely. Wow. What, what goes into that? We're going to demo out the old box in here, open up the smoke chamber, mm -hmm. and rebuild this jack arch higher. So you have range, open space, and then we have to have a hood, I presume? Absolutely. And then we'll put our mechanical unit inside that'll take all the gases and fumes up the existing chimney. Lower right to there. Good use. Well, that is going to be very cool. So are you guys ready to start this demo? We're ready to start. Let's get to it. Done. So you've got yourself a very big opening now. That's terrific. We do. And you did some restructuring up top. We have. We have. First, we took the mule, put a new one up top using historic material. Yep. Repointed the brick for structural rigidity. Uh huh. And then that allowed Alfonso to take open the smoke chamber here and get the height we need so when you stand in front of the range. So what's the process of rebuilding this to give us the finished look? What we're going to do is take historic brick and take the face off of it mm. and actually create a veneer. Oh, cool. Because we don't want to build it out, make it too thick. We'll bring it all the way up. And then right about here, we'll create a new jack arch. For support. For support. And then we'll do our stainless steel hood underneath, and we'll have a beautiful spot for our range. If you were hoping to make this a focal point of the kitchen, that is definitely going to happen. I think so. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. 
Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Tommy. Mark, I see you got all the furring strips off of this wall here. You gonna leave the brick exposed? We are. All right, that's cool. Well, these furring strips are nailed onto these mules right here, and then they apply all the lath that go across this way, and then they plaster into it, and that hooks the plaster to the lath. So now when you remove it all, you end up with a gap behind your casing. Do you have a plan for that? We do. We have to solve it. Yeah. Especially because it's a more formal house. If it was a more industrial application, we might leave that gap. Sure. But now, we've got to do something. We really want to preserve the historic casing. Absolutely. Some people might take the easy way out and just put a filler piece here, oh, yeah. which would widen the casing, be a little messy. Change the profile. Totally change the profile. We don't want to do that. No. So what's your plan? Our plan is to take a filler piece and gently scribe it to the brick. Mm -hmm. We'll then epoxy it, the seam, sand it, and once it's painted, you'll only get that beautiful historic casing profile. Great idea, because that will make the casing look like one solid piece. Nice idea. Good look. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I've actually got a sample here. That looks great. It's a nice detail, simple. It takes some time for the carpenter to get that scribe. Oh, yeah. And it's ready to get client approval. So he's got to sign off on this. He's got to sign off on this, and he's also got to sign off on our ceiling detail. What you got going? Oh, look at that. The idea behind it was for our new ceiling to read as if it's the original flooring from above. But yeah. that's not practical. We need acoustic insulation. We need insulation from things like brooms and dust falling okay, through. I don't want it falling through. Mm -hmm. So we've done a rigid insulation. Yeah. Put up a little bit of a, of a nailer. Right. Created an air pocket. Right. For additional sound. And then very simply got six inch pine and lined it. And then the homeowner can either stain, whitewash, or paint that and kind of contrast it against the beams. Yeah, that's a beautiful touch. And the beams, you're just going to clean them up? Light hand sand and pull the nails. Yeah, I think that's going to really look good. I think so as well. Yeah. Perfect hey timing, Scott. How are you? Great. How are you? I'm good. Hey, it looks really good. So we've got this for you and Kathleen to approve. Yeah. I know you wanted the exposed floor look, but we know we couldn't do that. So now we've done some insulation, little air pocket, and filled it with a standard TNG pine. Looks really good. Nice look. I good. like it a lot better than just uh, plain old uh, drywall. Oh yeah, a lot better. It's a much better detail. Great look. Great Let look. me see if you like our trim detail. So we're able to fill the gap here. Oh, right, right. I see that. You scribed it to the brick. And I think it it's a, really a clean look. I like that better than just a filler strip. Oh, a lot better, yeah. Good. If you're happy with that, I've got something at the fireplace for your approval as well. Great. Good. All right, we're going to scribe this piece in here. So you want to attack it there so it doesn't move. Wow, I am in heaven. Brick, brick, brick. The whole city built in brick. This neighborhood, 1840s. It's beautiful. Last week, Mark and Tommy found a lot of damage right here in this kitchen house with the mortar. I'm here to check it out and see what we're gonna do to fix it. Hey, Mark. How you doing? Wow, I'm doing great. So, Mark, looks like a complicated mess that you have right here. I know that this mortar is, what, about 150 years old, right? Approximately. Okay, so up in Boston, there are certain things that we do to make sure that everything's going to be compatible, all materials. What do you guys do down here? It's a very common problem in this okay. historic city. But we're fortunate. I got, I got a place right up the street. Great. I take a sample like this. I send it up. They'll not only give me a report on the color match, material composition, they'll formulate it for me and send it down in a bag. Wow, I gotta see that place. This is Holly Hill, South Carolina, and we're at the cement plant. Hey, Troy. Hey, Mark. Troy, I know you're the market manager in this region, and I know a lot of builders will bring you their mortar to, for you to analyze. Yes, this is a sample from the building you guys are restoring in downtown Charleston. Uh, the builder asked us to analyze the mortar 
and uh, we do that right here in our lab. Let me show you how it's done. Great. Hey, Scott. Hey. Mark, this is Scott, our quality manager. Hey, Scott. Hey, Mark. Got a sample for you. Okay, sounds good. So what we do when we get a sample like this, especially from an older building, we want to take a look at the composition of the mortar itself. We look at the uh, sample at the 20 magnification and you can see the lime and then you can also see the different uh, natural sand crystals. Okay, in the so Scott, well. the, the natural stuff is just all this discoloration right there, that's just different particles and sand and... Yes, exactly. Okay. And then the uh, white particles you can see is, is the lime, so, right. which is what we wanted to verify. So we'll take it from here, we'll run a chemical analysis on to determine the ratio of each. All right. Great. Okay, Mark, this is where we uh, do the uh, chemical analysis of the sample. All right. Uh, we're doing an acid digestion to break down and determine the amount of actual sand in the mortar. Um, based on this, we did determine that it is a, uh, a three-part sand to a one-part lime uh, mortar. And that helps us to determine what uh, to recommend for a replacement for your, uh, for your mortar. Okay, so essentially we have the answers to the test right now. Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah. great. So the next step for us is to see the, the work on the color and see the product made. And we do that at our rainbow facility right next door. All right. Okay, thank you guys. See you later. Mark, this is the final step. We're going to bring the sample in to Chris here. He's our color expert, and he'll match it for us. All right, so this is where it all happens, Chris. This is where it all happens. All right, great. Mark, as you can see, we have a wide variety of colors from white all the way through black. Sure. Which we've used on the three panels up top, different mortars. Okay, so Chris, this is the same brick in each panel, but different mortars. Correct. Yeah, that's, that's quite a difference. Mark, we also have numerous other channels, miscellaneous oh, yeah. colors that we use to fall back on. Nice, now those would be, that's just custom stuff only. Correct. Yeah, okay. This job, um, we come in and check the channels and, and do a visual. Yeah. And once we run into a good match, which well, happens to be this one. Yeah, you can this see This is that. the one the homeowner approved. Once it's approved, yep. our raw materials are transferred into a blender mixer and it is dropped down into our work bin with a three spout bagger and pelletized and hooded for shipment. Okay, at that point it's ready for us, right? Ready for you. All right, because we got a lot of brick. But thanks very much, Chris, that was great. Yes, sir, thanks. All right, and Troy, thank you. I mean, that was start to finish fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovation, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. Best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. houses in Charleston are built right up to the road. No room for a garden here. But walk to the back of one of these properties and you will find a hidden garden. Glenn, you've been selected to make up a landscape plan for the homeowner? That's right. The clients gave us a pretty um, lengthy wish list for their garden. And even though we're on a really small lot here in downtown Charleston, we have a, a list of things including outdoor living area was one of their requests, uh, swimming pool, lounging area, and outdoor dining. So you've got a pergola over there? Yeah, we're gonna do a really nicely detailed timber pergola over here against this wall to a swimming pool and lounge area, uh, outdoor cooking, and an outdoor dining area that leads out to the driveway. The driveway will be paved with uh, brick and probably some crushed oyster shell. We always work hard to make sure the driveway is dressed up nicely enough that it can be part of the garden. Right. You've created a great urban space in here. And I hear you, that's what you're kind of known for. Right. We do it all the time. Would you like to go see a few of our gardens? I would love to. Great. Come on in, Roger. Now, I thought we would start our tour here because this is a Charleston single house, just like our project. And with that, you get the long, narrow lot and the garden that corresponds to it. 
So we have this big driveway coming down and bringing us into our first room. Is this another case of creating rooms again? It is, and so the, the entry room or the sort of foyer to this garden is the only part of the garden that's visible from the street. And there's just a beautiful view from the breakfast nook. Right, looking right out into the garden. And then if you focus back over to the walkway, you can see all the way to the back. I hear water. You do, Roger. But first, before you come to the fountain, it's the outdoor dining area. So we've divvied this larger garden space into these smaller rooms. So we have outdoor dining, which leads right into the house, into the kitchen. Then the fountain in the center, which also gives you that sound of water all the time from inside and out. And then we're having this little casual seating area framed in by some evergreens behind. And we go right into a sunken garden. Right, exactly. This is the only part of the old garden from the old uh, iteration of the house that we were able to save. And you take two or three steps down. This was built, we think, in the 1950s. It's a great little seating area. And I, I think it just sort of sums up the fact that this is a casual family area of the house. And I really love that about this garden. Yeah, thank you. You know, I think having looked at something that's a bit cozy, we should go look at something a little different, a little more grand. Let's go. All right. Roger, come on into this garden, which is very different from the last one we were in. Um, this little informal pathway would lead you to think that nothing really was even back here. I love this loose stone, it's so informal and yet it makes a nice noise when people walk in. It does and it also allows the water to percolate right through. Oh wow, take a look at that. Yeah, so Roger, I think this is a good example. I wanted to show you uh, another garden that actually had a pool in it. This pool is a little bit larger than the pool for our project, but very easy to read what we're thinking uh, for the garden. I love the black plaster on the pool. It does really well with reflecting the sky, reflecting the walls. And I don't know quite how dark we'll go, but you can imagine those tall brick walls Huge and that walls, pergola yeah. reflecting into the pool. They're spectacular. And even you have a walk here leading right up to the house. Right, sandstone with uh, zoysia sod, and the stones are placed where you most likely step to get to and from. You still have enough green on the ground. Well, this is pretty spectacular. Yeah, thank you. And you know, I think this is one example that we've seen of a pool in a garden. We've seen the other residential garden. Now we've got one more thing to go look at. Oh, I can't wait. So Roger, to wrap up our tour today, I thought we'd come to a garden that's actually open to the public. We're at the Hayward Washington House that is part of a museum. So you, you look around and this is a little different scale from our project, yeah, definitely. But, but I thought it was good to show something that historically is represented a little more accurately on a larger property. You have the kitchen house, the stable, the privy, and then over to the right here, you can see a representation of where they would have grown their own vegetables. There's some citrus, grapes, and herbs all here that's all right close to the house. To the house. They were very smart that way, weren't right. they? And then toward the back would have been more of a work yard with livestock. Clipped boxwood parterres. English garden. Thanks for the tour, and I can't wait to see your work at our job site. All right, thank you. On our next project across town, demo continues. So I'm gonna stop by to see what they're finding. Patrick Evans is our local demo expert. So Patrick, what's your plans for this building? Well, we're starting up top right now. We're gonna do a little exploring, take down some plaster, some lath, determine what's rotted, what's not rotted, and then we're gonna work our way all the way down to the bottom. Let's take a look. Love to, let's go. So right up here on the right hand side, we've got some, uh, we got some balloon framing for you to take a look at. Oh yeah, a balloon framing is actually a lighter framing. Timber frame is called it that. It's when you have a two by four or a stud that goes all the way from the top plate all the way down to the sill. It's a lighter framing, but it's nice to see this diagonal bracing in there. That's not done very often. I agree. Well, right in here, we've got some, uh, got some casing. Goes all the way up and around. Baseboard yep. down here on the bottom. 
we're going to uh, leave this in place on this particular project. A lot of times we remove it, sometimes we leave it in place, this one stays in place. Great, great. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, you got a hole in the roof up there. Yeah, some water damage, uh, rot starting to set in, all the joists are gonna have to be replaced in that particular order. Yeah, you can see uh, the joists are definitely rotted. I take it that's why you have the plywood here, because the floor is rotted. Absolutely, it continues all the way down to the first level. Well, you definitely have your work cut out for you. About how long do you think it's gonna take you? About seven to eight days. Seven or eight days. Well, it's a lot of work, and I can say these floors look like they're in pretty tough shape. Yeah. I'm actually gonna meet up with Judith to talk about flooring later today. Sounds good. All right, Patrick, catch you later. So, Judith, demo is really coming along good at your house, but Thanks. I notice that your floors are in really rough shape. They and are. you know, it's never too early to start looking at flooring, and that's why I brought you to this place right here. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Yeah, it's pretty nice, huh? Hi. Hi, April. How are you? It's amazing. So we have a lot of choices. So what do you have in mind for your flooring? Um, something amazing. Just, uh, <laughs> I mean, this is a great place to start. I mean, uh, light, bright, okay. uh, beautiful. All right, well, we have two different walls. Let's okay. show this right here. This is actually reclaimed wood. All right, so this flooring was made from old beams or old joists and made into flooring. Okay. Texture. It's nice texture, and if you notice, it's random width. Mm -hmm. So, do you like a wide or a narrow flooring? You got to think about that. Okay, great. Now let's look at this wall right here. This wall is all new wood, and it's designed and been cut just for flooring right from the beginning. All right. Now in this climate here, they recommend a floor that is five inches or wider to be an engineered flooring. Okay. And let me show you what the difference between engineered flooring and solid flooring is. Okay. First of all, if we look at the new wood, engineered flooring is a veneer, and the veneer could be whatever species you want. And they put it on plywood, and the plywood gives it more stability. Makes sense. Lessens the chance for it to cup or to warp or twist. All right? Okay. Let me show you some of the species they have down here. All right, let's look at this wall right here. The first thing I'm going to show you here is the density or the hardness of the wood. This hard pine is actually softer than this walnut, and this walnut is a little softer than this white oak. Okay. All right. What do you like, Tommy, pre-finished or unfinished? Well, I actually like pre-finished, especially on a job site when we're trying to get it done quickly. If you used unfinished flooring, the flooring guys are going to come in, and they're going to take over that space for maybe two or three weeks. No other work can get done. Pre-finished allows them to do work in other rooms and other work can be done. All right, I have a lot to think about. Thanks so much for the help. My pleasure. What do you think, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, floor shopping trip you took was just in time because we are going to need it. Oh yeah, this is all gone. Yeah, this is really bad. So most of the demo in this building is done. We've got a little bit more to do before we start rebuilding. Right. And what's going on with the other project? On the other project, I'm going to check out and see how they refinish the mantles. All right. So all of that is coming up next time. And until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Tom Silva. For this old house here in Charleston. So bring it as a sample. Tell them just to match that. Match. <laughs> Should I match the finish of the type of wood? Next time on This Old House, we bring a pre-Civil wall mantle back to life. Getting all the way through a mantle takes me about a week. Wow. You can't go far in Charleston without being reminded of this city's involvement in the American Civil War. And today, we are headed to the place where it all began. You are in the most bombed area in all of North America to this day. And it's time to start repairing these old windows. This house has a lot of windows, and they are all original. That means they're 177 years old. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.